All right, hopefully you guys can all hear me. Uh, this is only my second time streaming on Twitch. Uh, I ran a test stream last night and made a big rookie mistake of leaving my mic on instead of muted before the stream. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to wait a couple minutes in case anybody else uh, comes in. So it's been a long day. <laughs> I've been helping Rachel Quinlan, uh, you know, run the auction and uh, field questions and bids all day. Um, I probably should have rethought having a 9 p.m. panel, but that's okay. We're going to make the best of it. Uh, for those of you who maybe don't know me, um, my name is Amanda Makepeace. I am a fantasy and science fiction illustrator. Um, I think I, this, this panel is a little bit different because I'm actually going to be talking about my graphite art, which I don't relate so much with fantasy and sci-fi. Um, it has a little magic in it, and it has a little mysticism in it maybe, um, but it's more fine art. Um, it's, it's just a, a passion project for me. Um, I love working in graphite. Graphite was my first love, um, as a young artist. And so this is something I do in my spare time. Uh, it does have overlaps though with my fantasy art, uh, because my fantasy art actually is, has a lot of kind of nature earth tones to it. Um, so there is some overlap, and in fact, some pieces that I'm currently working on will relate directly to a fantasy painting that I also have in the works um, in the background. Uh, but to start, let's see, um, Earth Rituals. So I began this campaign, actually, I had a Patreon for years, um, and I never could quite work out what I wanted to do with it. Um, it just didn't work for me. And it, I guess it just took years for me to figure out, oh, wait a minute, I could actually use it for this other project. It's perfect for that. So in December of last year, I started reworking the, you know, the, the backbone, the structure of it all, um, reworking graphics and getting everything uploaded. And then I went kind of, I did a relaunch in January and so far it's been going really well. Um, my motives, my, my goals, my intentions might be a little bit different than I think most Patreon users. Um, I'm using this campaign more like a blog to explore the artworks and to share the stories behind them. Um, it's not something, and in fact, this is the first time I'm talking semi-publicly about it. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to watch this Twitch, um, but it's not something I talk about a whole lot. Um, I've been bringing some of these pieces to a LuxCon in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania for the past couple of years. And I'll, I'll talk about the pieces with, you know, some collectors, but it's not something I've shared on my website. Um, but I felt like it was time to maybe have a place for it. Um, as much for me as for other people who are buying the art or just enjoying it. Um, to understand kind of where this is coming from. So earth rituals, the earth is kind of a given. Um, 
rituals, you know, are, they're usually ceremonies, uh, a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. That's from the dictionary. Um, I do think of these as part spell on paper. Um, they are like a ceremony. They are a ritual. So, you know, when I talk about my Earth Rituals project, all of these pieces are little rituals. They're, they're little art rituals that connect me to uh, a memory, a place. Um, and the places are usually, you know, uh, mountains, places I visited, things that I have a strong connection to, uh, places that I love. Um, and I often use pieces that in the, the still lifes that I've picked up along the way. I have a, a massive collection of stones, feathers, um, looking around. I have bird's nests. I have bird eggs. I have pieces of lichen, seashells, uh, honeycombs, bones. Um, it goes on and on. Uh, things just catch my eye and I can't help but pick them up. And this is something that I've done since I was a child. And I just never stopped. Um, every once in a while, I've kind of um, let my collection go and then I start again. Um, but it is, it is a little bit like a compulsion. Um, it's hard to, if I'm taking a walk or a hike and I see something, I, you know, I can't help myself, but to, to pick it up, it, these things resonate with me. What I didn't realize as I started reconnecting with the graphite and making these drawings, um, was that I wanted to, I wanted to write as well. Um, I actually started writing poetry, um, back as a teenager. Um, that's probably when most poets start writing, uh, when our emotions are all over the place. And, um, another thing that I never kind of let go of, um, you know, I go through periods where I don't write, um, as every writer does. Uh, but I'm always kind of jotting down little bits of poetry, even when I'm not really focused on it. Uh, I often write little lines, even just to go with some of my fantasy paintings. And some of you may have noticed that in the past. I'll have, you know, just a few lines of verse that I'll throw in that kind of relates to the art. And sometimes it's what actually spurs the idea. So I knew when I started working on this, when when I decided to go all out and make the Patreon, um, I wanted to incorporate my poetry as well. Um, so let's see. I think what I'd like to do first, um, and this is actually, this is behind the scenes look at my Patreon. So, you know, this is what patrons see, not... Um, you know, if you're not pledging anything, then a lot of this stuff is hidden. And I'll, I'll expand some of these as we go. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. So I have a lot of, I have poems interspersed. Not too many right now. Um, I have a whole notebook full, though, if I wanted to delve into older works. Um but I've been trying to focus on um, some new pieces. Uh, let's see, and maybe I'll, I'll read something in a little bit. This is a look at um, my current work in progress. It will come up. Yeah. You may have, if you follow me online, you probably saw the handprint with the raven. Well, this is going to be a handprint with the coyote. And there's actually, I'm working on one poem that is tied to both of those. But let me back up just a step and we'll just take a look 
at what I have on my website under the graphite section. So I mentioned this briefly last night. This might look like one of my recent pieces, but it's actually one from 2017. Um, this was something under my skin that I always wanted to come back to, uh, was drawing these still lifes. And all of this that you see in this drawing is actually pieces in my collection. I have all of those feathers. I have that mandible. It's actually a cat mandible, not of my cat. Um, it was one that I found out on my walks in the country. Um, but yeah, I never, I never kind of got back around to it. Um, you know, the life of a fantasy artist is extremely busy and between book covers and conventions and everything else in between, it kind of got lost in the mix. And then I started looking through some of my old folders and I saw this drawing from 2017 and I was like, you know, I need to do more of these. Um, I want to do more of these. And it kind of began with some of these alchemy drawings uh, with the gold. That was, that was my first kind of for, foray back into it. Um, especially this piece here, uh, Memory. And this piece, you know, without knowing, you, you might just think, oh, wow, that's really kind of cool looking. Um, but it, it has to do with me and the memory of a cat that I loved. Um, so it's kind of, it's supposed, it was actually done for the Changeling Artist Collective, a, um, an auction on, uh, tools of the trade, I think it was. And this piece is called Memory. So I'm literally casting a memory spell with these objects. And, and the memory spell was to, to never forget. To never forget my cat. And they're not all sad. <laughs> that one is a little sad. Um, I, I do miss her. She was my cat that I brought back from Britain. And she was one of a kind. And some of them are simple. Okanalufti is a river in North Carolina. And I this was a stone that I actually brought back from uh, the Cherokee Reservation there. And it's just meant to kind of symbolize that, that region, uh, the river. And the actual stone does have a striation in it. Um, and I kind of see it as the river. So kind of a double meaning there. Yeah, and here is the raven. So yeah, I'm working on the other half of this piece. This was the right hand, and now I'm working on the left hand. And these are, well, the right hand is supposed to symbolize my heart. And the left hand is going to symbolize um, my spirit or my soul. Um, I'm still kind of thinking out, thinking that out as I go. That's that's the difference with working in in this medium and this type of art. Um, the plan is not always clear. A lot of it is based on emotion and memory and how all those things tie together to create something that stirs emotions. So let's go back over to my Patreon. All right. Let's see if I can get down to the start. I think we can do this. and we'll work our way to the top. It's funny, now that I've found my kind of my path with Patreon, I'm enjoying it far more than I ever did before. 
Um, it gives me an outlet to share the stories, um, and, but also connect with people. And, and I like, I like doing that. I, I like doing that more than I thought I would. Let's see. So my Patreon is part art. It is part poetry. It's also part inspiration. Um, I like, I like to think that I offer a respite from our busy lives. And of course now, you know, our lives have changed so much in the last few months, um, you know, because of the virus. And I still, I still hope that it, it is that. Let's see. I don't know if I can open this. Here we go. So yes, the path and the journey. So one of the first things I did when I launched my Patreon was I wanted to give everyone an idea of where I'm coming from as a person. I think if they're going to, I think if people are going to invest their time and their money into a project, you know, that they have to, they have to feel connected to a person. And so, you know, I shared a little bit about, um, my background, um, you know, growing up in sometimes a turbulent home, uh, the things that I found solace in, uh, the things that I loved, you know, uh, National Geographic magazine, the things that I started collecting. And, and I said down here at the bottom of this initial post that you know, creating the drawings feels like a meditation. And, and I still believe that. It, it, it does feel like a meditation to me. It's soothing. Uh, you might be a raven. I've been told that more than once. Uh, but I also share uh, tools. So I try to offer a little bit of everything. These are my favorite things in the world. Tombow Mono 100s. Um, I'm open to trying other pencils. I'm actually planning to try new supplies, possibly monthly. I've never tried Blackwing pencils. I know a lot of people love them. Uh, I like my Tombows. <laughs> so um, I'm not opposed to it. It might happen. Oh, I see a couple patrons are here. <laughs> Well, this won't be news for them. Let's see. I've also gone back through old art. Um, this was an older poem that I also shared. Um, kind of ties into uh, my love of owls. Um, but also being a fragile child and growing into a strong woman. Which, you know, I think those things are, yeah, they might feel a little sad, but they're also inspiring. Yeah, there's a photograph of that stone painting. Let's see. And if anybody has any questions at any point in this, um, put them in the chat. I do have the chat open on another screen, so I will be glancing at it periodically. And yeah, the Tombow mono erasers, I love them. Um, I use the round one more than anything else. Uh, but the rectangular one is, is quite nice too, especially if you're trying to keep like a really even line. Um, yeah, they're the best erasers <laughs> in the world.
And hopefully this isn't dragging too much for you guys. Um, I know that uh, Twitch has been a little bit funny. Hello, friend. Long time no see. Oh, I don't know who you are, though. <laughs> I do have favorite stones. Yes. And in fact, I think I have one right here. At least I should. I usually keep it pretty close by. Yeah, I do. It's right here. I wonder if I can bring it up. It's actually the stone that is in memory. I love this, this little rock. So, and here are some, some good pictures actually from that. Um, these were some of the progress shots from memory. This stone actually appears again and again in my artwork. Um, it came from Vermont. Uh, at least I believe it was Vermont. I would have to do some digging to confirm that. I used to run a project called the One Pebble Project. And if you Google that, One Pebble Project, it will come up with a WordPress blog. Uh, that is still there after all these years. Um, not long after I moved back to the U.S., uh, my health wasn't the best at the time. Um, and I, I was, I couldn't get out. I couldn't do a lot of hiking. And so, but I could make art. And I put out a call for people to send me stones stones and pebbles. You send me a pebble and I will make a little tiny drawing for you, like, you know, an ACO size. And the response was amazing. Um, so <laughs> yes, Google one pebble project. Um, and I'm still open to doing that. People can still, I've always said, send me a pebble and I will send you back a little mini piece of art. Um, but I got stones from all over the country. I got stones uh, from Mexico. I had people that I knew in the UK that were just sending me stones, even though I brought stones home from the UK. Um, I welcomed all of it. Uh, people, Some people sent me uh, fossils even. It was unbelievable, the response. So yeah, this is, I love this stone. Um, it shows up not only in my graphite work, uh, it shows up in my fantasy paintings as well. Um, yeah, you'd have to do some scrolling, but yeah, it's, I've used it a lot. I've also just painted it watercolors, you know, little still lifes, things for fun. Um, I'm not quite sure why this stone pulls to me so much. It kind of feels like it's an eye. Um, and there's, I don't know, there's power to that, I guess, kind of like, you know, warding off evil. Um, not that I really necessarily believe in evil. Um, I do believe in negative energies. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I love that stone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Two years old and she's collecting pebbles. Well, it's a wonderful hobby. Um, just be prepared that if she keeps it up, um, yeah, you're going to need help uh, storing all of them. I have, they're all over my studio. Um, I even had somebody send me this, which, I mean, is not really quite a pebble. <laughs> Uh, but I accepted it. Uh, so I have rocks all over the place. Um, and my family knows to bring me rocks too. Uh, my brother who is in Alaska again, uh, when he came back from Alaska, uh, last year, he brought me stones. Um, it's always a good gift. <laughs> I accept them. Let's see. All right, and wildness. This was a piece that I actually finished just before LuxCon last year. Um, 
And it, it's, it's a piece that's kind of hard to totally express what it means. Uh, the little bear at the top is a bear that um, I have out on my desk as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see him or not. We'll try. There he is. Um, this was carved by a Cherokee artist in North Carolina. I have one and my daughter has one as well. And it just, for me, it kind of symbolizes family and ancestry. And, and that's kind of what I was trying to tie together in this drawing was not just our physical family, but um, our, our ancestry to the planet, to, to wildness, to the earth, and each other. Let me see. And the stone that is in this is actually one of the stones that my brother brought back from uh, Alaska. Uh, I love that stone. And it, it may show up again in some other drawings. It's just too pretty. I think everything in Alaska is probably just, just too pretty. I would really love to go there someday. Oh, yes. So this post here was when I began experimenting with the handprint. Yes, Pebble with a capital P. <laughs> Uh, the, I, for the gold, I use, uh, it's a gold watercolor made by a New York company called Kremer, Kremer Pigments. Um, I also have their silver. Uh, it's just, I think it's the best. I, I love it. And you can actually apply it very thick and it holds that gold shimmer even when the light is not reflected on it. Hey, Kit. All right. So the funny thing about this handprint. So I used powdered graphite. And if I were to do it again, I mean, I've already done the left hand now and I, I you know, I wanted to keep it consistent. Um, but I don't know if it would have been easier to do this or to use the graphite putty because I have the putty now. The putty, yes, is messy. Hey, Rachel. Um, but the putty goes on. I mean, it just really seeps into every line and pore. Um, but... I still, I, I like, I like the way this piece turned out as is. Um, and in this post, I was actually kind of talking about the fact that handprints are a thing in my house. Um, this was a piece that actually is hanging in our bathroom downstairs. And I didn't take a picture of it because, um, I mean, these are handprints. I'm okay putting my handprint out on the web, but uh, on the opposite wall of this painting uh, we actually have handprints of our entire family. Um, my mother, my brother, myself, and my daughter. And so, yeah, it's not... Another thing, I, I, I just tend to circle around to things that, I don't know, they, they get under my skin, and I think that's probably true of all artists. Um, certain things just resonate with us, and we return to them again and again. Let's see. All right, here we'll. I will read a poem. Um, not something that I do very often. I mean, I read them aloud to myself, obviously. Let me get this window right. Okay. So this was a poem that I actually began writing in November, December. And I didn't, I didn't, I say I didn't finish it till 
January, but even then I kind of put a caveat on these. Anything that I post on the Patreon is still kind of open to editing. Um, poetry actually takes quite a while. Um, I've talked to poets before who have worked on one poem for an entire year. Um, I do tend to work on them for months and then I might get it to a place where I'm okay with it, but I'm, you know, I want to let it sit just like we let painting sit to look at again, to make sure. Um, so I always say, you know, the, most of these are probably done. Uh, but if I ever end up publishing these, they still might undergo edits. Oh, that's cool. Um, so this poem is called Winter's Stillness. There is a stillness to winter. It beckons me. I can feel its pull, the call, to wait, to lay beneath the trees, to listen to their whispers, and heed the messages in their swaying limbs, leaves at my feet. I yearn to know their stories. There is a stillness to winter. It beckons me. Hopefully that didn't sound too bad. <laughs> Let's see what else is in here. Oh, here's a little, a little behind the scenes. So when I was at Chattacon in January, I was finishing up the right hand with the raven. And I was actually contemplating adding the coyote to this drawing. Thank God I didn't do that um, because I think it would have been the wrong move. Oh, thank you, Madeline. Uh, they needed to be two separate drawings, but that's all part of the creative process. And that's some of the things that I like to share is the stuff that I'm not sharing on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, the things that you don't see. There's a portrait of me when I was younger based off younger photos of me. You guys have all seen that though, I think. Uh, I am planning to do more videos on my Patreon. Uh, I really need to update my webcam for that though. I, you know, I think we're all always looking for deals as artists and I tried to go with a less expensive model and it's fine for this. It's fine for Zoom meetings, for, you know, this little image of me in the corner. It's not so good for uh, recording my art process. So I'm planning, one of the things I'm planning to do this year is to upgrade my webcam uh, so that I can do more videos of my art. You guys can see how I worked. Uh, this was a free uh, print that I, I had in the beginning. I'm actually planning to do these every six months now. Um, I haven't decided on what the next artwork will be, but uh, I might have a poll up. Oh, I will. Thank you, Rachel. Sydney's actually here. Uh, she's my mod. My daughter is my mod in the channel tonight. Um, I don't know if she'll say hi or not. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. But yeah, this turned out exactly the way I think it was supposed to um, without the coyote. And the coyote is, you know, ending up in the next one. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Yes, crunch wrap make peace. And today is her birthday. Yeah, I'm totally calling you out. I love you, Sydney. This whole quarantine thing has been uh, really hard. Uh, she's at a condo in Athens and, you know, I'm at the house and it's her birthday and that kind of sucks. But she's here helping me and she's wonderful. This is a good example right here of one of the things that I also like to do with my Patreon. And that is, have, I have some personal posts you know, about 
how do I want to word this? Um, you know, our own mental health um, and taking care of ourselves. So I share some of this, um, you know, what, what I do when I'm feeling stressed. And, you know, as many of you know, I had a lot of stress last year um, being a caregiver for my mother who was doing really well. Um, but, it, you know, it takes its toll. And so I like to share things that help me get through those hard times. And of course, most often than not, that involves walking in the woods. Um, but it's important. I think it's important to share those moments with others. And that all kind of ties into, you know, what I want to give people through this Patreon. You know, I want them to come to the, this, this, these pages and and not feel more stressed by whatever's happened that day or that week. Um, I don't want them to feel pressured in, oh, I've got to buy, you know, this person's art. You know, if you're only chipping in $2, that's okay. Um, I don't ask for anything more. And I try to give 200% back if I can. Right now I'm posting about two times a week. Uh, this was a great post. We'll look at these. Um, I shared some of my reference photos that I don't share online with anybody. Um, so this one you might recognize. I This was from a drawing that I did for the Changeling Artist Collective, the auction that was titled Home. Um, the only difference from the reference photo, I mean, I did my own kind of interpretation of, you know, the, the pattern of the nest. Um, but I also added uh, a skeleton key and took some liberties with the feather. But I mean, that's the thing with reference. We hear that all the time, you know, don't be married to your reference. It's just kind of a guide. I like to, even though I work in realism, I like to capture more of the essence. I feel like that ends up actually being more lifelike than rigidly following what I photograph. Let's see. Uh, this is one that I haven't finished setting up yet. So I know that I want this stone in this particular feather. Uh, that's another stone from Alaska, but I'm not quite sure what's gonna go above it yet but it's in the back of my mind. Uh, that's the stone from North Carolina with the red band in it. Uh, that was the original um, photograph that I took for memory. And that is a piece of my hair that I cut. <laughs> and I actually put a little bit of hair gel in it to kind of keep it together. And then I took a bunch of photos. Let's see. And then this was the reference for wildness. Uh, I actually used a little bit of kneaded eraser to hold the bear on its side since, you know, he wouldn't literally stay in that one position. Let's see. Yeah, and that's it. But I'm planning to share more of those. That's something that I don't share anywhere else. Oh yeah, some progress shots. I share I share those when I can. Little updates. I was really happy when uh, this one sold to um, a friend in Tennessee. What is that? Go eat chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Should I read another poem? You guys let me know if, if I should read. An okay, yes. <laughs> I'll read another poem then. Uh, this one is from February. I'm actually trying to 
uh, upload a poem every month. Um, that doesn't always happen, but that's what I'm shooting for. I have one that I'm working on now um, in the evenings before I go to bed. Uh, this one is called Heart of the Land, and I'll just say real quick, the photographs that I share with them are things I've shot myself. Uh, this was actually a path on um, a nearby park that uh, I like to hike at called Sandy Creek Nature Center. That was one of our spring excursions. Okay, so Heart of the Land. I looked for you along the old path, the way that leads to the stream where the clay is still pure. I went to find you, to know you. My fingers press into the ashen sediment. I mold it, I make it my own. In my hand beats the heart of the land. You were here all along. I actually really particularly like this poem quite a lot. Um, a little behind the scenes. Uh, when I was a teenager, thank you, Maria. Um, when I was a teenager, there was a creek that I used to walk to uh, on the weekends. And I was walking there with a friend uh, who is no longer in my life now. And we found a natural bed of clay. And it was so pure that I went home and got like <laughs> some of my mother's old um, like Tupperware canisters for like sugar and flour. We weren't using them anymore, so you know, but they had lids so you could seal it. And I came back to this creek and I took as much clay as I could. And and I, I actually sculpted quite a few things with it. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I love working with clay. Um, it's just an expensive hobby. I don't do much of it now. Um, but that's kind of where some of this poem was born, was in memories of that, memories of that afternoon um, in the clay that we collected and and, and working with clay in general, I mean, you are, it is a piece of the earth. It is, it is this planet and the heart of it even, and you can shape it into things. Um, it's just pretty cool. <laughs> so let's see. Oh yeah. So here's a better look at the coyote. I have since worked on um, on the eyes and a little bit of the face, but you can kind of see where it's going. Um, it's going to have quite a presence when it's done. I'm quite excited about that. Oh, thank you. It's funny, in some ways I feel like I'm, we all have different phases in our life and I'm just starting to enter a, a new one. And whereas I never shared uh, my poetry really before now, now all of a sudden, um, I don't know, I feel like I can. Um, I am, I am thinking about possibly, you know, making a book sometime in the near future. We'll see. Uh, patrons will get a first look at that. Um, this is another thing that I like to do. I actually like to record one minute videos of something outdoors. And it literally, I have these tagged under meditations um, because that's what they're meant to be. They're meant for uh, my patrons to literally stop for one minute, watch this video, hear the sounds outdoors, um, and nothing else. I don't know. You probably won't be able to hear any of this, but you'll see the water, and you can imagine what that sounds like. This is at a nearby park that is like three minutes down the road from me. Um, 
It's absolutely beautiful. It's just a tiny little gem tucked away off the road. But yeah, I like I like having this. So, like I said, it's not all the art. It is also poetry and nature and um, peace, um, serenity. I want that's what I want to give back to people. So, and I think time is up. <laughs> Oh, I love the sound of water too. I could sit in for this place is called Harris Shoals. I could sit in front of that and just sit there for hours and listen to the water running over the walk, the rocks. It's just the most peaceful thing ever. But yes, I think we are about out of time. I do want to put in the chat um, a link to the next panel by uh, Belinda. Belinda Morris is going to be doing a live stream tonight on Twitch by Bill. I really recommend you guys um, check her out. Um, she really is, she does amazing things uh, with watercolors and pencils and mixing it all together. She actually did a portrait of Sydney that I own um, and I cherish, but thank you guys so much for coming. Um, this is going to be saved and I will, I will keep it around. I'll probably highlight it on my, on my Twitch feed. So it'll be around for a while. Thank you guys so much. All right.